Hello guys and welcome to another podcast from Regional Front Trainees. Uh, in this podcast, we are covering the shoulder block and we are going to talk about basics and some anatomy in this part one. So why do you want to do a shoulder block uh, and why do we want to focus upon scapular nerve in particular? Well, for shoulder surgery, the most common block that is performed is the interscalene block. But there are a few problems with interscalene block. Uh, one of the most important problem that we see is uh, the phenomena of involvement of phrenic nerve and therefore you might not want to do this block uh, for patients who are respiratory cripples such as asthmatic or COPD patients. The other problem is that you get a lot of brachial plexus involvement culminating in uh, unnecessary motor block which your patients might object to and then thirdly there is uh, problem of other side effects such as uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement and so on. The shoulder block per se constitutes blocking two nerves that uh, have major sensory supply to the shoulder. This is the suprascapular nerve which comes from the upper trunk and the axillary nerve which is the terminal branch. Let's have a closer look at the brachial plexus and its relationship with different uh, anatomical structures uh, in the chest and the upper limb. So uh, the brachial plexus starts as roots from the upper part of the neck and comes together to go downwards towards the clavicle. It passes between the clavicle and the first rib to enter the uh, upper part of the chest lying uh, medial uh, to the shoulder joint where it gives many branches out of them axillary nerve being the terminal branch that also has innervation to the shoulder joint. Let's have a look at the brachial plexus from the front. Uh, as again, that can be seen here, the brachial plexus initially starts as roots in between the two interscalene muscles uh, and that transverses downwards uh, to form trunk, then divisions and then cords. The uh, upper trunk gives two different branches. One of them is the nerve to subclavius, which is a small muscle uh, lying under the clavicle uh, helping to depress the shoulder joint and the second important nerve is the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve as can be seen here hooks backwards going underneath omohoid and previous uh, muscle to enter the shoulder. Let's also have a look at the scapular anatomy. Uh, scapula has got two angles the upper angle being the superior angle and the lower angle being the inferior angle. It also has got two borders, uh, the medial border and the lateral border. It's also important to note that the scapula has got two processes, one being the acromion process and the other being the coracoid process. Now the acromion process is important if you want to do the suprascapular nerve block, whereas the coracoid uh, process palpation is quite important while doing infraclavicular block. What I've just drawn here is the scapular notch or the suprascapular notch. This is a very important notch because the suprascapular nerve passes posteriorly through it to enter the supraspinous fossa. Here is again having a better look at the uh, passage of suprascapular nerve through the suprascapular notch. So this is the notch drawn in black. The one in yellow is the suprascapular nerve and the one in blue is the suprascapular ligament or the transverse scapular ligament. Let's uh, draw this on the side for a better understanding. And here, as can be shown, I first drawn the suprascapular notch and the suprascapular nerve sits on top of it. The nerve is covered by the ligament which is the suprascapular ligament or transverse uh, scapular uh, ligament and the artery that accompanies the nerve is the transverse suprascapular artery. It generally lies above the ligament. Let's now have a look at the fossa from the posterior side. The spine of the scapula divides the scapula area into two fossae, 
one is the supraspinous fossa lying above the spine and the other is the infraspinous fossa lying below the spine. Now as the suprascapular nerve enters the supraspinous fossa, under the supraspinatus muscle it supplies the muscle and then it hooks around the spine of the scapula at the spinoglenoid notch to enter the infraspinous fossa supplying the infraspinous muscle. And therefore, in all together, the, supraspinal, uh, the suprascapular nerve gives innervation to acromion, the acromioclavicular joint, and the glenohumeral joint, which is the shoulder joint. Also, it's important to note uh, another nerve that supplies the uh, shoulder joint, which is the terminal branch of the brachial plexus, the axillary nerve. Here again, I have demarcated the suprascapular notch area with uh, the underlying nerve and the artery. And laterally, I have demarcated the quadrangular space, which is bounded superiorly by the teres minor, inferiorly by the teres major, medially by the long head of triceps, and laterally by the lateral head of triceps. And the axillary nerve emerges from the quadrangular space going posteriorly to give branches uh, to the deltoid muscle as well as the shoulder joint. Let's also again have a look at this from uh, another diagram point of view. So here you've got the branches of the suprascapular nerve entering the infraspinatus fossa and supplying the shoulder joint. And it can be seen from here that it supplies the posterior aspect and the medial aspect of the shoulder joint. Whereas the axillary nerve and its branches generally supplies the lateral aspect and the anterior aspect of the shoulder joint. So to summarize, the shoulder block would constitute blocking two different nerves. One is the suprascapular nerve, which is responsible for most of the innervation of the shoulder joint. And the second being the axillary nerve. Remember, not the axillary block, it's the axillary nerve, uh, which also supplies to the shoulder joint. Now the suprascapular nerve innervates the posterior aspect and the medial aspects, whereas the axillary nerve innervates the anterior and lateral aspects. There are two other small nerves which also supply to the shoulder joint. One is the subscapular nerves. Now basically you've got three subscapular nerves and they may variably supply the shoulder joint. And the second is the musculocutaneous nerve. All right guys, this is it for this podcast. And if you liked this podcast then kindly share it with your friends on social platform and i'll see you in the part two of this podcast goodbye and thank you